Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Kimberlea, and today I'm going to be talking about relationships and dating. I know that this channel is primarily about breakups and how to get your ex back, and my channel is never going to stop producing that content. But I think I want to turn it in a little bit of a different direction just because I think it's so important for people to understand how to have a successful relationship so that they don't experience the breakups. So it's really fun because I was speaking on my audio responses to one of the people who had purchased one of my one-on-one -on -one sessions. They're available on my website in limited quantities because I can't do too many in a month and I can leave it in the cards and below. But when I was talking to her, I said a lot of things that I don't normally say in a lot of my videos and a lot of my audio responses to people and I thought it would be valuable for everyone to hear the message. So I heard relationships are hard. That was the phrase that she had said in her intake form to me, that relationships are hard. And you know what? That's a common thing for people to say. Relationships are so hard and relationships are work. And it's true, but at the same time, it shouldn't be hard. So <laughs> I think that the first problem that people have is they're with the wrong person. So it should say relationships are hard when you're having a relationship with the wrong person. And I think that that's pretty much the reason why we have so many breakups and failed marriages and hard times and heartbreak. And the way that I explained it in my audio response to this person was as follows. Finding the right person to be with is so important. And unfortunately, schools don't teach us how to have relationships. They teach us math and spelling and English and grammar, and they don't even teach us those things at a level where we can even do anything with it for the most part. It's just literally the shallowest understanding of those concepts. And then a very important thing in our life, like relationships, is totally non-existent in most school curriculums. So I think that's unfortunate because one of the most important things in life is relationships, relationships with ourself and relationships with other people. So it boggles my mind that schools don't think about life skills and have relationships as a major subject in school to teach us how to have relationships with our parents, with our friends, with, you know, with our boyfriends and girlfriends and so on and so forth. It's almost like we have to learn about relationships from being hurt and it doesn't have to be that way, but unfortunately no one's teaching us how to go into a relationship, but they teach us things like how to go into a job, how to pick a career. And all those things are really, really important. And I don't want to make it seem like I don't think that those are important aspects of life because they are. But most of the time, the reason why you do want to get into a career and you do want to get into business is because you want to either impress someone so that they will become your partner or you want to be in that field to meet someone. So, I mean, that's not the only reason. I'm just saying like, ultimately, the reason why I think a lot of us try hard to be in a nice career and have an education is not only for our earning potential, but for the potential to be a person that other people would want to be with, right? So what's interesting is that we fail to realize that picking a partner is even more important than knowing how to pick the right kind of career for yourself but we're not even taught how to do that. So I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the right way to go about finding a person to be with. And I know this sounds silly, cause it's like, what do you mean? You're just like, you know, you go out to bars, you go online. Yeah, and I understand that that's the way that everyone has done it for a long time, but that's actually not the ideal way to make sure you're meeting somebody that's going to be ideal for you, okay? Because you're pretty much leaving it to Russian roulette. You're like, I'm just going to walk into a bar and I'm going to hope and pray and cross my fingers that the dude I meet here is going to be exactly who I want to be with for the rest of my life. Like that's, that's pretty risky. The likelihood of you randomly meeting someone and them having all the characteristics that you want in a partner is slim to none. Yet that's the way we date. We go out with friends, we meet someone, we get to know them. And then we find out months down the line, you know what? They just don't have the right lifestyle or mindset or goals. And it's like, you should have known that before getting involved with them. Like, did you not ask them what their goals and aspirations were? Did you not get to know them before you decided to commit to them? But it's because we have such a backwards way of going about finding a mate. So I kind of want to take you through the 
ideal ways to find someone that's right for you because I think we need help in that area and it's taken me a long time to understand it and in no way am I saying I know everything about it but I'm going to give you a generalized guide to follow that's going to help you find a better mate okay because whatever you're doing now probably not as good as what I can offer you from experience and the expertise I've gained from talking to so many people and going through school so here's the thing I liken it to this and maybe it's a way you understand this a little better. And I said this to the person I was doing the session with. If you were going to buy a pair of shoes, and I told her, like, if you're going to buy a pair of shoes and you've never wore shoes before, but I'm gonna say it a little bit different to you guys. Let's say today you were going to buy a pair of shoes. What's the first thing you have to know about yourself in order to find the right shoes? You're gonna to have to know your size. Is it the same as it's been? Is it still a size seven? Or did you get pregnant a few months ago, have your baby, now you're size eight? Has your foot gotten wider? Is it the same way it was before? So you need to know things about yourself. And those are not things that can be negotiated. You either have a size seven or you have a size eight or you have one foot bigger than the other. Your anatomy and who you are is not really gonna be left up to chance. You're gonna know for a fact what it is about yourself that's gonna enable you to find the right size shoe. And I know this sounds so simple, but I liken this to you picking a mate and dating. And the reason why is because if you knew you were a seven or you go into the store and then they measure your foot and they say, yeah, you're a size seven. Would you, would you walk over to the aisle that says size fives? Would you? If you know you're a size seven, would you even walk to the aisle that sells fives? No. Why not? Because you know you're a size seven. Fives aren't going to fit on your motherfucking feet. So why are you going to waste time walking up and down an aisle with shoes that do not match you? You're going to what? Find a shoe that you really, really, really like and then try to squeeze your goddamn foot inside of it so that your toes are all curled up just so that what? You can look good to other people or feel good about having that shoe that you've always wanted. It's a Louboutin and it's on sale. It's size five, but I'm still going to buy it hoping that somehow my big ass foot will fit inside the shoe. I mean, we're going back to fairy tales and Cinderella here, but come on. You think this is a really stupid example because you guys know damn well you wouldn't do that. You're like laughing to yourself saying like, that's so idiotic, like why would I ever do that? But people do it every day in relationships. Because number one, they fail to get to know their foot. So when I liken this to a person getting to know themselves, they fail to know themselves. So in essence, they don't know what size foot they have. They don't know enough about themselves and they don't have a good enough relationship with themselves to know what would be suitable for them. So the first thing that people have to do is being completely honest with themselves. And it sounds silly. Like, of course I can be honest with myself. Like I know what I want. Do you though? Do you? Because we get caught up in what society and our friends and our parents want us to have in life. Maybe we're in the closet because we don't think our family would appreciate the fact that we know we are not attracted to a certain gender. Maybe we're afraid to be honest about who we would like to be with because our parents come from a different background. Maybe we're afraid to date outside of our ethnicity because we're afraid we won't be accepted by our friends and family. These are challenges that we all have. And what's so important is that you get alone with yourself and you find out what really makes you feel loved, and what really makes you feel happy. And what I recommend to everyone that I do a session with is to get in a quiet place and date yourself. Take yourself to dinner. Ask yourself the same questions you would ask to a person you want to date. That's silly as shit. That is silly as shit. But it's really funny because we don't know ourselves anymore. We have ideas of what we would want our life to be like, but they're fabricated because we're worried about what other people will think. We do this with careers. We do this with wanting to have children. We do this with picking a mate. And it's sad because the most important relationship you will ever have is with yourself. So, don't worry about what other people think. Sometimes you have to make major sacrifices in life to be happy. But you only live this life once, so why are you going to live it 
trapped and stuck and feeling oppressed. It's not worth it. It's not worth the stress it will cause. It's not worth you twisting and contorting yourself into some position that's not healthy or right for you just because someone else told you to do it. So the first step is to get right with yourself, get in a quiet place, meditate, go on a a trip or something where you can be quiet and make a list that really speaks to who you are as a person and the qualities that you imagine someone having that you would spend the rest of your life with and stop lying to yourself about what those characteristics are because in the back of your mind you might have an ex that you're trying to get back with and all of a sudden the list resembles every single fucking quality about that person that you lost that is not being truthful to yourself you can fool yourself so you need to get in such a quiet place and erase all the thoughts that have been going through your head and polluting your mind and all the feelings that you've been having the feelings are real but the feelings don't always have to be truth they're real to you you feel them but that doesn't really mean that they're truth. You may love a guy who is a bad boy, drives a motorcycle, has a whole bunch of tattoos, but no job and a really bad family life, but you love him. And you start making a list and some of his characteristics start popping up on that list, but then you realize my feelings are what's making this list. Rational thinking and logic are not making this list because once you get to know yourself, You're going to know what kind of person you need to find that goes with you, who fits you and goes with your personality and compliments who you are. Just like the shoe fitting. If you know that certain things are going to upset you, if you know you have to have a certain financial income, if you know that you want children one day, then stop lying to yourself when you meet someone, ladies, and saying things like, sure, it's fine that we just hook up. I'm not looking for a long-term relationship. That's you trying to fit your big ass foot into a size five when you're a goddamn seven because you think ideally this guy would be great for me if, if he wanted kids, if he made a significant financial contribution to a relationship by having a good career, if he had a better family life, if he was from my ethnic group, if my parents would ever approve of him. So all these ifs are those lies we tell ourselves and women are really guilty of this. Men, on the other hand, guys have an easier time being honest with women because men have a lot more logical thinking than women do. You can't create something new, fresh and amazing with someone when you can't accept that that broken relationship is over and it was broken. It's called a breakup because it's broken. That is one of the books I recommend to you guys. And if you can't accept that something in that relationship was broken, because you guys always want to tell me, you, no, 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 you don't understand. My relationship is great. They left for no reason. They're treating me like shit for no reason. I didn't do anything wrong. I beg to differ.